All right, everybody, uh, it's quarter past, and at this point I would normally say, all right, who needs more time, and so on. However, um, I, you, might be, you might have been noticing, or maybe you were too busy uh, in your own book, I've been sort of trying to help you along just a little bit, um, but I've tried to give you a head start to make sure I wasn't spoiling anything um, too, too massive. I'm just gonna walk you through now, and I wanna make sure we get to the end of this because you can quite easily get um, caught up in all of the algebra. Going to Mrs. Lee's and I point from earlier today, um, a lot of kind of what you need to be, um, to solve this question is very fluent at what you've learned in advance with um, your log laws, with a, you know taking care with your algebra. Uh, we have actually by this point um, done most of the stuff that is quote unquote extension two. And then the rest of your brain needs to make sure it knows what it's doing uh, and doesn't make any silly arithmetic errors or things like that, okay? So let's chart a course through this. Where I left you was, we determined what the initial horizontal velocity was, uh, and we called it 60 cos theta, because we didn't know what theta was, because that's what the question is, find out what the angle of projection um, is equal to. So when you go ahead and you substitute that into this equation that we got from our first integration, and my second integration is on its way shortly, um, this is what you get. I've got this weird negative index here, so I've opted to turn that into a fraction down below. Now from there, I've just substituted in that constant, here it is, and at this point, um, I'm now gonna begin working, you can see my lines here that will ensue. Where I'm trying to head towards is something that I can integrate with respect to time. That'll get me to a displacement equation because of course x dot is just um, dx on dt. So I can integrate that, especially since I do have this as a function of time. Um, theta, remember, is a constant. K and M are constants. Uh, so therefore, that's my destination. That's where I wanna get to. I want an x dot equation that's nice and neat, which I'm almost there in my working, and then I'm gonna integrate, find that next constant. So from here, um, you can see uh, I was just doing a bit of tidying up. I've got a you know, negative signs everywhere, so I multiplied through by negative one. Uh, at this point here, I decided to take a little bit of inspiration from, um, I think it was Yao who mentioned, it's like, hey, we can keep on going with a fraction. I'm not gonna do this forever. You'll see it's gonna get rapidly messy, but um, 9.8 on 44 squared is what you get from K divided by M. Remembering that K, if you go back up here, you can see me doing this working over here, K has M in it, right? So when you do K divided by M, it just drops off and you just get uh, all of this stuff. So don't know why I put these minus signs here. We don't need them. So that's the 9.8 on 44 squared that has appeared in my working. And then from this point here, I've noticed that on the left-hand side, I don't have X dot. I have the reciprocal of X dot. So you can see I've combined it into this slightly awful fraction here because once I have a single fraction, I can turn it upside down, get the reciprocal, which is what I've just done on this line here. Now, I hope you can tell me. Go ahead and post it in the chat. Um, looking at this, I know it looks like a terrible mess because of the numbers and because of the pronoun rules, but can you tell me what family of functions this will belong to um, when I go ahead and integrate? Because remember, um, this x dot, this is actually, as mentioned before, this is dx on dt. So, think back, yes, well done, excellent. Sazmit was in first, but it doesn't matter if you're in first, I hope you're all ticking over and you're thinking. This is gonna be a log function because it looks very much like f dash on f. Um, we're pretty close, right? If this is my f of t, then f dash will be um, 9.8 times 60 cos theta. I've already got the 60 cos theta there, it's just this is not quite right. So I'm just gonna to have to multiply through by, or divide through by an appropriate constant. So I'm going to do that just on the next line. Uh, dx on dt is equal to, um, what do I need to divide through by? And the answer is pull that 44 squared out and then divide by 9.8 so that you will get the 9.8 on your numerator because that's going to be part of your x, uh, sorry, your f dash. So there's that. Uh, let me be exceptionally lazy as I already have been today. That's going to be my denominator because I haven't fiddled with it. And there's a nice straight line there. Okay, so at this point, ready to go. Let's go ahead and integrate this 44 squared on 9.8. That was the constant coefficient that I pulled out. Uh, and then when you have a look at this, it's already in the precise form I want, f dash on f. So therefore, I'm quite happy to go straight to log of um, everything that was on that denominator there. So maybe I should put this as a big square bracket because I've got parentheses inside. So I'm going to duplicate that. Um, as has been discussed in previous mechanics questions, I don't really need to concern myself with um, 
absolute value signs around my log and just think for a second about why. Um, when you have a look at this, your time is going to be um, positive. Uh, and when you think about your angles here, right? 60 cos theta. Um, what domain is relevant? Well, this is an angle of projection and presumably the golfer is gonna hit the ball forward. So therefore, your angle of projection is gonna be, be between naught and 90. It's gonna be an acute angle. Between naught and 90, or naught and pi on two, I suppose I should say, since we're doing calculus, um, cos theta, is positive, right? We're in the first quadrant. So therefore, um, you've got positive, 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 very, very positive. So that's why you can see I'm like, eh, don't worry about the absolute value signs, that's unnecessary. Of course, my integral is not finished yet. I do have another constant flying around. It's gonna be constant two. All right, now just like before, I used um, the initial conditions, but with velocity. Um, here, I've got the initial conditions for displacement, but they're even easier to use. The initial condition is that when time is zero, you're going to start at the origin. So you get x equals zero. So you can see all these delightful terms here, get, get that one there and this one here, they're all going to collapse to zero. So what do you get left with? I hope you can see that you're going to get constant two is just gonna be um, the negative of this, right? Because it'll they'll both end up on the right-hand side together and you just need to subtract, right? So it'll be 44 squared on 9.8 multiplied by log of 44 squared, right? So when you go ahead and evaluate that, um, I got on my calculator, and I'm just, I'm only gonna write down two decimal places, but I actually have many more in my calculator. Um, this is what I got, uh, dot, 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 I suppose. So could you give me a, a thumbs up or a, a hooray or whatever in the chat if that's where you landed or if you've got something different please wave and be uh you know register your alarm with me but that was what i got when i evaluated um i just i'll just write it for clarity here um 44 squared on 9.8 log of 44 squared that's what i got there I'm not getting much in the chat, so I'm assuming that means perhaps you didn't get there or maybe some of your working um, wasn't the same as what I got up above. So as I get to the end of this and finish it off, um, and you're welcome to go back to the recording, if I'm going a little bit fast for you, I apologize, I'm just mindful of the time. Um, you can tell me if I made an error um, somewhere in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this as my value for the constant. So what I'm gonna do is I can say, uh, x equals, and then I have everything here. Whoop. I guess I don't really need this highlighting. Um, and I'm gonna take away that constant which I just evaluated which was minus 1495.14. Okay, so this is what I know, and at this point, I'm like, wow, I finally arrived at this displacement question, uh, equation in terms of time. What was I trying to do again? Okay, if you go back all the way to our question, it says, um, calculate the angle of projection, find theta. That's what I need to know. If theta is my real unknown, if you have a look at this equation we've arrived at, here's theta, let me just highlight it for you. There it is right there. In order to evaluate theta, I'm gonna to need to get rid of every other pronumeral, right? I'm gonna to need to get rid of or substitute something appropriate for x and substitute something else appropriate for time. Now, I've already used my initial condition, time zero, so that's done. I'm not gonna get any more information from that. Can someone go ahead and post in the chat, even if you haven't gotten the answer to this yet, what information can I use to work out what my theta is going to be? And that's gonna be our final answer. Can someone tell me what is the last bit of data we haven't made use of yet? I've got some people who are, uh, have an idea but not quite brave enough to put it in the public chat. Okay, fantastic. Yay, I've got lots of people. Thank you, Liam, Sham, Jiayu. Well done. We don't just have the initial condition, we actually also have, as it were, um, the final condition. I'm not worrying about what happens after it bounces. Um, I know the flight time, which is 4.53 seconds. And I know where I land because we were told the golfer hits the ball and it lands 155 meters away. So I can use that piece of information. Now, because our numbers look horrendous, this is gonna get messy fast. I did say you're gonna need your calculator here, but I wanna emphasize to you, right? Actually, the important part of your thinking here is not about the arithmetic, um, so it's the concept, that's the thing we wanna emphasize, but of course, you getting the right answer or not does depend on your arithmetic um, being valid. So if, for example, you were to write an answer like 155, there's my x, equals 44 squared on 9.8 log of, here we go, 9.8, uh, times 60 cos theta 
times, there's the 4.53 from the time, plus 44 squared <laughs> minus this constant two, um, you know, you've, you've done most of the work here, right? Can you see from this point, you just need to do some careful manipulation and make theta the subject. It is tucked all the way inside um, that terrible log term, but you can hopefully chart a path through here, right? Uh, you're gonna need to add um, together these constants to get them all together on the left-hand side, divide through by this one, um, and then you'll have a log equation, right? So what I'm gonna do is try and um, carry this along for you. And as I go, I, I started to evaluate numbers because um, like 9.8 times 60 times 4.53, I'm not gaining anything by writing them out separately anymore. So I'm actually going to go ahead and evaluate them. All right, here's what I got so far. Um, I start with this 44 squared on 9.8, which I evaluated as uh, about 198. That's what I got there. Uh, it's multiplied by that log. And then inside the brackets here, and maybe I'll just try and highlight this so you can see the, what I'm actually evaluating. Um, I did 9.8 times 60 times 4.53, and I got something around the 2,600 marks. So this was the number that I got, and uh, you can go ahead and check that in your calculator. That's still multiplied by cos theta because I don't know what theta is. Um, I worked out what 44 squared was as well. It's 1936. And then while I was at it, I added this constant. Actually, I'll highlight it. Um, I'll try and highlight this so you can keep track of where I got things from. Um, I added this 1495.14 to 155. And what I got was uh, uh, 1000. 650 and then the one four of course is hanging around so that's where I got that from you can see where I've added I'm just going to divide through now so you get left with this log on the left hand side don't need to highlight that uh, and 1,600 ish divided by 200 ish gives you something in the eight ballpark so I got eight point three, five, three, and obviously a whole lot more decimals from there. Now at this point, a uh, bit cheeky, I, I've been writing it in natural log uh, this whole time because I'm lazy, but that's really shorthand for log base E. So if I'm gonna get that theta that's tucked all the way in there, I'm gonna need to convert this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. So that's exactly what I did on the next line. Um, I took this part in here, and I said, well, that's gonna be equal to, what's the base? It's E um, raised to this, which is the power. So, uh, or I should say the, uh, the index. So it's E to the power of 8.353, whatever that happens to be. And um, we're pretty close now, right? You can just see there's a little bit of rearrangement to go. So I'm gonna um, subtract that 1936 from both sides, which leaves me with this. Um, e to the 8.353, take away. 1936, uh, I need to divide through to get cos theta. Um, so that's gonna give me this. That's unchanged, but I'm gonna divide through by that weirdo looking coefficient out there, 2600 something. I apologize, I know that I can write much faster than you than I can copy and paste, but you didn't get a head start. Um, and at this point here, um, I reached reach my calculator again, and um, I wonder what you got. Um, I got zero point. And then I wonder if you want to post in the chat what you've evaluated there. You can see we're all at this point here. I'll wait for the first person to get there because that will give me an indication that I haven't been writing way too fast. Maybe I have. Does anyone get there with their calculator? Hooray, okay, so yes, I've got um, 8.660, and then what trails after this is just basically going to depend on at what point you simplified or um, approximated, I should say, um, and whether you've got all of the exact values in your calculator and using all of those, or in Desmos or whatever is appropriate. Now, I hope you look at that number, and it looks weirdly familiar. Eight, 0.866, you're like, hold on a second, I've seen this before. Um, it's almost like the question was designed to do this. That's a whole lot like, root three on two, um, because this question has been designed to land you, of course we've done approximation all the way through. I got very, very close to 30. I got 29.995 dot dot dot, and that was probably just owing the approximations that I did honestly. Um, so that gives me an angle of projection of about 30 degrees. You're like, I can't believe I went all that way, and I got an angle that was almost exact value. So, 
that's the answer that we were looking for. There's the angle of projection. So look, we're right on the dot. Um, I know that was a challenging question to open up with, but I hope you could see through the algebra, um, the algebraic and arithmetic soup that we had to get through. Um, the key things I wanted to highlight, and I'll go back to that just in a second if you wanted to copy that down. The key things I wanted to highlight were, number one, under a quadratic drag moment uh, model rather, you don't end up with the simple exponential equation we got with linear drag. Um, and then secondly, you know, they can ask a question from whichever angle they want, pardon the pun. Um, you know, here's the drag coefficient, here's the angle pro projection, find out everything else. Or as in this case, um, here's a bunch of pieces of information about where the golf ball landed and how fast I hit it. Now you tell me the drag coefficient and what angle I struck it at. So as promised, let me just come back down to here and I'll leave that on screen. Um, we've hit half past, so thank you for working hard with me. I know that was a bit of a slog, um, but I really appreciate your effort and your thought, especially at this time in the morning.